Assembling a high quality model steam plant, part 8. Preparing the steam engine for piping to the condenser. I had this engine in steam a few weeks ago and noticed that there was a bad leak on the union that is silver soldered to the pipe. So I think the first thing I'll do is repair this. This is fiddly taking off these flanges because the nuts actually touch the middle part of the flange. So you can't just spin them off with your finger, you have to take them off most of the way with a very small spanner, which is quite interesting really. Yet another exercise in patience. And slowly but surely the flange parts company with the steam chest cover after a while. And this is the problem, even though the brass steam union is soldered onto the pipe, it leaks around the union. All I did was clean up the pipe, reflux the part and re-silver solder it. And now I don't think it's going to leak. And in this clip I'm cleaning up both of the pipes with a piece of brass or wadding, followed by a brisk rub with the piece of cloth. This is one of the exhaust pipes, and unfortunately the pipes are pointing the wrong way. I don't want the pipes to point down, because I would have to put a right angled union in, and you never really want too many angles on the outlet. A steam engine is really a gas engine, because steam is a gas. The white stuff that comes out of a steam engine's exhaust is not steam, that is water vapour. Steam is an invisible gas, and it's very hot and it's very nasty if you touch it. What I'm going to attempt to do is turn these pipes round so that they're facing backwards. But what I also need are a couple of unions so I can join these pipes onto another piece of pipe to take the exhaust to the condenser. And I may end up modifying this condenser and bringing one exhaust pipe in either side of the condenser. I need to shorten the pipe runs from the exhaust. The last thing I want is a very, very long exhaust that's going to condense the steam to water and then fill up the condenser too quickly. What I'm doing at the moment is making two steam union adapters. This is a piece of 3 8 of an inch diameter brass and I've used the centre drill down the middle and now I'm drilling it 7 30 seconds of an inch which is tapping size for an ME thread which stands for model engineering which will be quarter of an inch by 40 threads per inch. I'm going to silver solder one end of the adapter to the existing short stub pipe from the engine and the other end of the adapter will be left threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch so I can screw in a piece of copper tube after I've threaded that quarter by 40 threads per inch too. It would be a very easy job just to drill a piece of bar like this with a quarter inch diameter drill and silver solder the whole assembly but then it wouldn't look very good. It would just look very plain and very unsteam engine like. I don't like parts that are made from hexagon bar because it's not a model within itself, it's just a chopped down piece of hexagon bar. So I'm trying to make something that looks a little bit more the part. I'm using a small parting tool to cut the middle out of this piece of brass. And maybe it's not the right tool to use, but it does the job very quickly and without any event. It's squeaking a bit and protesting, but it's cutting the brass and that's all I want it to do. Don't forget this is not a high precision item. I'm going to be cleaning it up with some sandpaper in an attempt to make it look like a casting anyway. I like making things like this, provided there's only two. I don't like mass production. If somebody asked me to make a hundred of these, I'd have to say, uh, uh, no, no, I'm washing my hair tonight, or something similar to that. I'm using my old file in the lathe, just around the edges, and don't forget if you're filing in the lathe, be very careful not to catch the file in the chuck, and also the file must have a proper handle on it. I'm finishing off the job by using some quite coarse sandpaper to start with, and then I will go onto some finer sandpaper to get a good finish. So I've drilled the 7 30 seconds of an inch hole, so now I can easily tap it with a quarter by 40 tap. Often when tapping in the lathe I will turn the chuck by hand, but I'm using the lathe under power to tap this thread. It's going slower than it looks on screen because it is speeded up. And now it's time to counterbore the thread, and I'm using a quarter of an inch drill for this so that the pipe goes straight into the union and can be silver soldered to it. And now it's time to part off the completed component. Whenever you do any machining in the lathe, before you start, it's a good idea to give it a dummy run in your head. For instance, I'm not fully parting off the component, because I need to use the file to round the end of the piece before I part it off. 
because if I didn't do this it would be quite difficult putting the part back in the chuck in order to round the other end. See what I mean? You have to think ahead all the time. I get it wrong frequently and I think, oh no, I should have done that first. And then sometimes I'll persevere and be lucky and other times I'll turn the piece of work around in the chuck in an attempt to do a job on the other end and then it jumps out of the chuck and mangles up. So it's a good idea to just take a little bit of time out to think what you're doing before you rush in and make a thorough mess of it. A proper engineer wouldn't do this, but as I've mentioned many times, I am not a proper engineer. And that's why I find it easy to show beginners how to go on, because really speaking, I've never really left the beginner stage. I figure things out as I go all the time. Really, it's common sense. But as a good friend of mine always says, the problem with common sense is it's not that common. And he's very qualified to speak because when he was an apprentice, he shoved his hand in a circular saw and removed three of his fingers. And common sense is not that common, particularly when someone in the place that you work at when you're an apprentice says, oh, by the way, can you just clean out all the sawdust but doesn't bother turning off the circular saw. Once I removed both of these exhaust pipes, I heated the first one up and managed to rotate the copper piping, but the second one just twisted and mangled up. So I cut another piece of copper pipe to length after bending it, and I'm going to solder this into the original fitting, which I've drilled out. And then I silver soldered everything together, including the two union adapters that I made. And they look really terrible, covered in flux residue and oxidisation. What I'm doing here is threading a length of silicone rubber tubing through them, tying a small knot at the end to stop the parts from falling off the silicone rubber tubing. And now I'm going to dangle the parts in my acid bath and probably leave them overnight and this will get rid of all the flux residue and the oxidisation. I could do with topping up this acid, it's getting a bit weak because it's done quite a lot of dissolving over the years. And it's not sulfuric acid, it's something called Kilrock K which is kettle descaler. And as far as I know this Kilrock K stuff uses formic acid. This is the original T-junction on the steam inlet to the Twin Victoria, but I need to modify it so I can mount a displacement lubricator in it. I suppose that I could just drill it 7 30 seconds of an inch, thread it quarter by 32, and I could mount the displacement lubricator that way, but that's not a very good way of doing it. So I'm going to make a little bush, which will fit in the end of the union. I've already drilled it 5 16 of an inch, so I need to reduce this piece of brass down to 5 sixteenths of an inch, and there it is. And that will fit into the union. Give it a quick clean up with a piece of sandpaper, and now I'm drilling down the end. This was the same piece of brass that I used for making the two union extensions on the exhaust pipes, so the hole was already there, it just needed making a bit deeper. Then I threaded the bush, quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch, and then parted it off. I turned the part round in the chuck briefly to clean the other end and just touched it with a file to get rid of the sharp edge. Then I took the part into the outer part of the workshop where I coated it in silver solder flux because I'm going to silver solder this into the original T piece. I removed the paint when I'm silver soldering to prevent contamination and to do this I just used the one inch belt sander. The intense heat of the blowtorch will remove the rest of the paint and as soon as the component reaches the right heat and the flux starts to take on a runny, watery appearance, I just touch it with the silver solder rod. And as you can see, it flashes around the joint. And the next part of the job is just to let it cool to black. After silver soldering, never quench the part when it's at red heat. Let it cool to black. And on larger items, let it cool completely. I've temporarily fitted the part in place on the engine, and in this clip I'm test fitting the displacement lubricator to see how it fits, and it fits very well and looks ok. As this cross piece is really part of the engine, I never liked it in red anyway, I'm going to paint it to match the engine, but what I'm going to do first is put it in the acid bath to get rid of all the scale and the flux residue. And that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.